Hi, Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. So the Central Bank of China cut rates by 25 basis points in a surprise move over the weekend, which actually has lifted uh, a, a number of Asian stock markets ever so slightly, but we still had some very good news uh, kind of coming out of uh, the major uh, economies there on Friday with most uh, indices managing to post positive uh, gains to, to end the week in positive territory as well. As the ECB looked to um, actually look at kind of further monetary easing, uh, which is a bit of a green light for many other regions, specifically now looking at China, people now looking at Japan as to what they might do next, and a number of other emerging market countries. So looking at the US 30 anyway, on Friday we managed to push through 17,561 to target 17,747. And now we're about three and a half, four percent away from the all-time highs on the US 30, even in the backdrop of a lagging global economy where more monetary easing is a necessity to help propel growth. So it's quite an interesting uh, conundrum for the world markets where they're not turning the taps off to unlimited credit there to help support the markets. At one point, they're going to have to do so looking at the UK 100, we are away from the session highs there on Friday. We managed to close halfway down the gain. Still impressive to stay above 64.15. Um, we've actually gapped slightly lower this morning, but 64.15 looks to be the potential support level. And it's an area there that many traders will be looking at, uh, especially when we are slightly overbought in the slow stochastic. It's just broken through that 80% level a couple of sessions ago. And the MACD histogram is slowing, so, uh, kind of showing a loss of momentum right there. So I wouldn't be surprised if we do have a little bit of negative pressure uh, affecting the UK 100 today, especially with commodity prices drifting lower. Looking at gold and crude, they're both slightly lower this morning already. Uh, and obviously the UK market is heavily impacted by indice, by mining and by gold. So looking at Japan 225, we had a good rally in to, to finish up the end of Friday, only for Japan 225 to reverse course as more negative news has come out of that region this morning. Um, the Bank of Japan has not yet acted with any stimulus measures and the, um, the, in, the index itself has reacted in kind. Uh, if there's any kind of rumblings from the Bank of Japan about easing, then I think you will see some moves in dollar yen. Uh, but what's happening is people are buying the yen in times of uncertainty, which is causing the yen to strengthen, which is dampening the appeal for Japanese equities, especially when their earnings have to be repatriated back to Japan with a stronger yen. It makes their, makes their profitability a little bit tougher. So 19,104 is a potential resistance to be aware of. If we have a look at the RSI, it's almost above the 80% level, but not quite as of yet, so maybe slightly overbought. So moving on to dollar yen. Dollar yen, as you can see there, had a great day there on on Friday, uh, pushing up a little bit higher, but as reverse course this morning, as I said, we have seen some safe haven yen buying first thing this morning. Moving on to West Texas crude, and we are grinding lower, firmly below 45, spot 85. Uh, looking at the tips of these candles, around about 43.40 is where you might expect some short-term potential support, but longer-term potential support at $42. Moving on to gold, the yellow metal has come under increased pressure, and Friday's candle is particularly ugly, having been much higher in positive territory and then pushed right back down into negative territory to end the session, and is following up this morning with further losses. 11.57 is a potential support, and with this uh, rejection of the move higher there on Friday from a technical perspective and looking at the psychology of the candlesticks, uh, the downwards pressure is certainly very prevalent in today's market. So 11.57 is potential support, 11.68 potential resistance. Moving on then to Euro dollar. Euro dollar firmly breaking lower as the that ECB comments from Draghi um, midweek last week about the potential for monetary easing as impacting the value of the euro as a quantitative easing, the printing of more money devalues the currency. And we are seeing a move below one spot 11 with one spot 0786 being the next potential support. And we are a good bit away from there right now. So traders might be looking at 111 as a very important strategic level to be aware of, potentially important strategic level. So finishing up with GBP USD, sterling also is not really having a great time, if I'm completely honest. 
a very negative bearish uh, pattern yesterday on Friday, following on from a particularly bearish pattern on Thursday, similar to what gold has from a candlestick perspective. We are capped by the 21 period SMA, potentially acting as support with a one spot 51.85 being the next potential support level after that. Negative crossover in the MACD and a negative cross on the slow stochastic. So cable is not looking um, that powerful first thing this morning. So economic data wise, we do have the IFO business expectations index from Germany. Uh, that's coming around about 9 a.m. UK time. And then we have GDP for the UK at half nine tomorrow and durable goods at 12.30 over in the US. And then you do have CCI data over uh, at, uh, over in the, in the UK as well um, later on in that session. Looking at Wednesday, you do have the CCI uh, for Germany. And then, uh, of course, you don't want to forget about the FOMC. That's on Wednesday, uh, and that's a very important time uh, to be aware of. So that gives you a bit of an idea of what to expect uh, macroeconomic data-wise. Do keep your eye on the chart forum as ever. Make insights part of your layout going forward. Lots of very important information there from our global analyst team. And join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.